Oh, oh, that was great. All right, YouTube, David Harry here. And in this video, I'm going to show you one way of connecting a phantom powered XLR microphone to an iPad Pro. Right now, I'm using my M1 iPad Pro. This also works on the 2020. It will work basically on any Apple device or any device actually that's got a USB-C interface on it. And if you've got a different type of Apple device and you can actually convert USB over onto Lightning, that will probably work as well. Anyway, so what I'm gonna do here is just quickly show you with my ZV-1 what's going on here. So. There's my iPad. Oh, let me try and keep that steady. Do you know what? I haven't got the stabilizer on. <laughs> right, there's my ZV-1 there looking at the iPad. And as you can see, the iPad has got one of those clamp things on. In fact, let me get a bit closer. I'll have to try and do something about those clamp things because they're dead useful. You can like use them to connect the iPad to all kinds of things, like mounts and stuff like that. It's got a quarter 20 at the bottom, which is connecting to the plate off the tripod. And then obviously it's on the tripod there. So just a quick shot to show you that particular setup there. Okay, so let me just switch that off. So what I'm going to do here is just quickly go through the actual like, you know, workflow here and I will do some cutaways showing some close ups. So the first thing that you need is a class compliant USB audio interface. When I say class compliant, that's basically just something that doesn't require special drivers. So something that any device will see once you plug it in. And in this instance, I'm using the Behringer UMC202 HD audio interface. This is actually the thing that I use all the time. It's like, I swear like that this is like the best audio interface for anywhere near its price. Now what you do, you get yourself whatever your audio interface is that you know will work with the iPad because it's class compliant. And then you connect that to the iPad via a USB-C to printer cable. It's actually called something different than that, but if you go and look for USB-C to printer cable, Cable, you will get one of these in fact there will be everything that I'm using here will be in links in the description to this video so what you do then you connect your audio interface in my case it's the Behringer to the USB-C input or the USB socket on the iPad and then basically at that point your iPad has then got all the facilities of that particular interface so right now I am able to connect two XLR microphones to my iPad. So obviously what I'm doing right now is connecting one. Now at that point, what you can then do is record that audio in a bunch of ways inside the iPad. So right now I'm using it to record audio with video inside obviously a capture software, which is Filmic Pro, which is what I'm using right now. Now the reason why I'm using Filmic Pro is because Filmic Pro has the ability to bypass AGC inside the iPad now this is very important if you can bypass AGC it means that you have got full control over the level of the audio and in that case the level of your audio is dictated to by your audio interface and now I'll show you what I mean by that right now what I'm gonna do I don't know if we can see this but I'm gonna start dialing down the input level on the audio interface here. I'm trying to do this so you can see what's going on actually, but I don't know if this is gonna work. You'll hear it work actually. So it's gonna start dropping down slowly. So I should be getting a bit quieter and a bit quieter. I don't think it, it'll completely go off when I hit the bottom, but it will get to the bottom. There we go. So I should be a lot quieter now. And then what I'm gonna do is just pull it right back up again. I think that's where it was. So the reason why you use something like Filmic Pro in this instance for doing video as well, or any audio capable app which can bypass AGC is because then you get full control over your levels using what I've just done there, which is the gain control of the audio interface. And that is very important. If you don't use something that can bypass AGC, then what's gonna happen? The iPad will start trying to like work out its own levels and stuff like that. And it can sound pretty nasty when it's doing it depending upon the combination of microphone and whatever that you use and to plug into it anyway so that's realistically how you do it. it really is that simple so yeah that's it oh and obviously as well the behringer here has got phantom power on it as well which is important for this particular microphone and the microphone that i'm using is the or is it oh, it's the tech zone uh, stellar x2 here so obviously any mic like this needs to be powered with phantom power and that's why i'm using the behringer as well because that sends phantom and power but ultimately all the power and everything is coming from the iPad so the iPad's feeding the power to the Behringer and then the Behringer is then sending that power via 
phantom power or it's up it's actually upscaling is it where the uh, the voltage to 48 from 5 and powering oh shut up dave no one needs to know that stuff right so it's trying to keep this thing dead simple and then i start getting into all kinds of stupid crap that no one wants to know anyways there you have it then that's exactly how i've done this <laughs> if people have got any other questions about certain setups to do with audio and ipads and things like that let us know in the uh, comment section what it is i haven't got a clue what people want to know and i don't really know where to shut up with these things so i'm gonna dive off now <laughs> i'm david harry thank you very much for watching this video take care and goodbye now